Hey everybody, it's Teresa. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to make a necklace today and I'm going to use some of the beads that came in my most recent Adornable Elements Rotating Beads of the Month Club. This month I got the Double Gemstones Beads of the Month Club in Rainbow Tourmaline. I also got the Findings Companion Pack and the Crystals Companion Pack and I just really, really love these companion packs, y'all. <laughs> They're just so beautiful. I just love them. So, and I'm going to use some of the Findings that came in the Findings Companion Pack. Uh, I'll put a link in the corner of this video and in the description box below to the unboxing I did for this subscription in case you want to watch it where I go over everything that came in the uh, Beads of the Month Club and the, both the companion packs. I have a coupon code. It's Teresa10 and I'll put it on the screen here and in the description box below along with a link to their website where you can sign up for any of the clubs that you want to. The coupon will save you 10% off the first month of whatever club or clubs you decide to sign up for. I've already got my strands strung up here because it took me quite a while to figure out how long I wanted each strand to be and it takes a while to string these gemstone chips on because they have tiny little holes and of course these tiny little saucer. I'm using the five to eight millimeter gemstone chip beads that came and the tiny little two by three millimeter faceted saucer beads that came and it takes quite a while to string them up because they have such tiny little holes. I've also got some of the four millimeter beads that came and the six millimeter beads. And I've got some of my uh, Miyuki Durko Galvanized Gold 11 seed beads that I've got in here, a few of them in here spacing out the beads. I've got some pieces of 20 gauge German style wire and gold. I've got some, I've got four two by two crimp tubes and four wire guardians from my stash. And then I've got four of the six and a half by five millimeter 18 gauge oval jump rings that came in the findings companion pack and the hammered hook and eye clasp set that came in the findings companion pack. Uh, I've got it strung on some soft flex metallics fine 21 strand bead stringing wire. Of course you can use whatever bead stringing wire you want. Uh, this is in copper. I don't have any gold but for some reason I have a ton of copper. <laughs> so this is what I'm using. By the time I get all the beads on it, you're not going to be able to see the wire anyway. Um, of course, I've got my bead stoppers. For tools, I've got my chain nose pliers, my tweezer pliers, my round nose pliers, my bent chain nose pliers, uh, my crimping pliers, and my cutters. And of course, I've got my little New Orleans shot glass to put my wires in when I get done. I think that's everything. Uh, hold on, I'll get some of this out of the way and I'll get started. I'll be back. Okay, I've got my strands here and I'm going to crimp them. Uh, this strand is about eight and a quarter inches long and this strand is about seven and three quarters inches long. So there's just about a half an inch difference between them. I usually put about an inch or an inch and a half between a, a double strand necklace, but I just wanted them to hang closer together. I just thought it looked better. I don't know why. I just did. So. And so I've got about a half inch difference between them. Uh, for my pattern on this longer strand, I've got two of the little saucer beads, and then a seed bead, and then a section of chips, and then a seed bead, four millimeter seed bead, another section of chips, seed bead, four millimeter seed bead, another section of chips, seed bead, four millimeter seed bead, and then this is the focal part of the necklace and I've got a longer strand of chips for it and then on this other side I just did the same thing that I did on this side and I didn't measure the sections of chips or count them or anything I just kind of tried to visually look at them and see that they were sort of the same you know uh, distance on each side there and then for this strand I just did I took all the rest of the saucer beads I had and I did a real simple pattern. I did three saucer beads, a seed bead, five saucer beads, a seed bead, three saucer beads, a seed bead, five saucer beads, a seed bead. And I just did that all along until I used up all the rest of the saucer beads that I had. So now I'm going to crimp. Uh, I'm going to take my crimp tube and my wire guardian. I'm going to go down the other channel with my wire guardian. 
back through my crimp tube. And I'm gonna tuck my little wire guarding in just a little bit. Very gently. So, there's a, so that I don't destroy it like I have destroyed many. <laughs> now I'm going to pull my wire through. Hold my wires apart so they're not crossed in there. Make sure there's no wire sticking out the top of the wire guardian. Now I'm going to go on the part of my crimping pliers that has that tooth. And I'm going to lay the tooth on top. And squeeze. That puts each wire in its own little channel there. Now I'm going to go in the part up here that has the half circles on each side, and I'm going to go in the middle one. That's the one for the 2x2 two two crimp tubes. I'm going to lay my crimp in there. Squeeze. And I'm going to tug. That's good. So now I'm going to take my cutters. And I use a different pair of cutters for bead string and wire than I do for head pins and eye pins and craft wire. Because if you use the same pair of cutters, uh, they'll get dull and they won't cut your bead stringing wire. So it's important to use a different pair of cutters. Now I'm going to push all this down. Cut it off my spool here. I usually leave it on the spool until I, as long as I can. Uh, I think it kind of helps save on the wire, although I appear to have left quite a long piece here. <laughs> I'm going to put my other crimp tube on and my wire guardian. And I'm going to go down the other channel of my wire guardian. And back through my crimp tube. Well, Chris, my little saucer beads are trying to get up in there. I don't want that. I'm going down the other channel of my, or the other, go back through my crimp tube. I'm going to pull my wire through. I usually try to go through a bead on this side to get my hands out of the way and to center that wire guardian over the last bead, but I'm not going to be able to get through those tiny little saucer beads again, so I'm just not going to try. So I'm going to hold on to my wire guardian and pull my wire through. I'll try to keep my wires from getting crossed in there. Tuck in my little wire guardian. Now, I don't want there to be any slack in my piece, but I don't want it to be too tight either. So I usually coil it up like that and it helps it keep, keep from being too tight. Now I'm going to Take my crimping pliers and go in that part with the tooth again. Lay my tooth on top. Squeeze. I'm going to turn it around and go in the part with the half circles. Squeeze again. I'm going to tug. That's good. So now I'm going to cut off my extra wire. So that's that strand. So now I'm going to do this strand just exactly the same way. And when I, when I get it crimped, I'll be back and we'll start on the rest of it. So I'll be back. Okay, I've got both of my strands crimped now. And I'm going to set these aside for now. And I'm going to work on the, other, the rest of the necklace. Uh, I measured this after I got it crimped and the wire guards on it. The longest strand, it's 9 inches now. So I'm going to make each side, I'm going to make a little beaded chain with my 6 millimeter beads and some simple loops. And I'm probably going to do, I don't know, five or six inches on each side, something like that. So I've got some pieces of 20 gauge German style wire. I use thicker wire to make simple loops. And this is about a five inch piece. I can probably get several 
made out of this one piece. So I'm going to go down here to the end. And I'm going to bend over to 90 degree angle. And I'm going to cut off and leave about a fourth of an inch of the pin. I'm going to take my round nose pliers, go to the very tip, make sure there's nothing no wire sticking out here. And I'm going to start rolling back a loop. And I am not the best at simple loops. I just, I've never been very good at them. Okay, now I'm going to on one of my beads and I'm gonna go take my pliers and go right above the, a little bit above the bead so that I don't crack my bead bend over at a 90 degree angle cut off leaving about a fourth of an inch of the pin take my round nose pliers and go to the end Start rolling back a loop. Make sure we get the loop closed up really well. And my loops are almost never <laughs> facing the same way by the time I'm done. So I just take two pairs of pliers and just twist them until they're facing the same way. Of course, you can use eye pins for this. I just uh, I was thinking that I could make my loops on each side. More the, more the same size if I used wire. I don't appear to be doing a very good job, but <laughs> the eye pins have such tiny little uh, eyes on them that it's hard to make a small, it's hard for me to make a loop that small. So that's why I decided to do it with wire instead of eye pins. So now I'm going to take, uh, I'm still using this same piece of wire. I'm going to go to the end here, bend over at a 90 degree angle. I often leave about a fourth of an inch of the pin there. Around those pliers. Roll back a loop. And that's a terrible looking loop, so I'm going to see if I can... Uh, fix this, put my pliers in there and cock it back a little, and then close it some more. That looks better. Now I'm going to open this loop that I just made, and string on the little length that I just made. I just find it easier to connect them as you go instead of banking them all and then connecting them. It's a little bit harder to connect them with beads on there. And I'm going to put another bead on here. I'm find the hole in it. So I would have to pick up one I couldn't find the hole in. There it is. And I'm going to take my pliers. Go just a little bit above the bead. Bend over at a 90 degree angle. Cut off and leave about a fourth of an inch of the pin. My round nose, I think I left too much that time. <laughs> Take my pliers and go to the tip. Start rolling back a loop. to get it closed up really well and that one seems to be a little bit straighter than that first one I did 
I'm going to do one more and then I'll do the rest of them off camera. So I'm going to go to the very end here. Bend over a 90 degree angle. Cut off and leave about a fourth of an inch of the pin. Around those pliers and roll back a loop. Can't seem to get that first loop to look good. Have to fiddle with it a little bit. Okay, that's better. Now I'm going to open my loop, thread my little chain that I've got made so far on here. Close my loop back. Take another one of my beads. These are the six millimeter beads. Take my pliers. Go, to the go a little bit above the bead. Bend over to 90 degree angle. Cut off leaving about a fourth of an inch of the pin. Around those pliers. Start rolling back a loop. I think these need to be a little adjusted a little. They don't seem to be facing the same way. Okay, so I'm just going to keep doing this, making this little beaded chain till I get five or six inches or so for each side, and then I'll be back and we'll put it all together. So I'll be back. Okay, I've got both sides of my beaded chain made here. I made them right at, they're right at six inches, I think. Yeah, six inches. So now I'm just going to put all this together. So I'm going to take my, one of my oval jump rings. And I'm going to open it up. I'm going to put my outer strand on and my inner strand. Close it up. And I'm going to take this side and take another jump ring. These are such good jump rings. I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to put on my inner strand. And then my outer strand, I think. <laughs> I usually always get these twisted and never take them off and do them over. I think that's going to be right. Now I'm going to take one end of my beaded chain that I've made here. Open it up. Put it on my jump ring. Close it back up again. Now I'm going to take the other side of my beaded chain, open it up, put it on this jump ring, Now I'm going to go up here, take another jump ring, open it up, 
open it up put it on this end of my chain and put my hook on here open it up some more that hooks pretty thick close it back up Take another jump ring, open it up, put it on this side, and put my eye on here. Close it up. There we go. All done. Let me see if I can get it laid out here and uh, see if I can get it to look pretty and I'll be back. <laughs> okay, there's my necklace all finished, made with some of the gemstones from my most recent Adornable Elements Rotating Beats of the Month Club, the Rainbow Tourmaline Gemstones and some of the findings from the findings companion pack i just really love these companion packs they are just such a great addition to the club of course i love the beads in the clubs too they're always so beautiful and so unique and so much fun to work with like i said if you're not subscribed to any of the clubs and you decide you want to be that coupon code will save you 10 percent off your the first month of whatever club or clubs you decide to sign up for i hope you all have enjoyed this video as always Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate those of you who have subscribed to my channel and watched my videos and liked and commented on my videos. I have a website where I sell my jewelry and I also sell gift cards and some extra beads and findings that I have. It's Teresa's Handmade Jewelry and I'll put a link to it in the description box below in case you're interested along with a link to my Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and my email. If you haven't, I'd really love it if you'd subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. So until next time, I hope you all have a great day. Take care.